Welcome, everybody, to another episode of Candid Combos. Today's guest is Alex Rubin. Alex, thank you for joining us. Um, as Joe said, my name is Alex Rubin. I'm an employment lawyer. Um, I started my own employment firm, uh, Rubin Employment Law, back in 2010. Um, but I've been a lawyer for, it's, uh, I'm in my 27th year, actually, of, of being a lawyer in the United States. Um, I'm originally from New York City, um, but I li now live in New Jersey. I went to law school in Pennsylvania, in Philadelphia, at the University of Pennsylvania. And um, my goal as a lawyer is to eliminate discrimination in the workplace. Um, it sounds simple, but it's really not so simple. Um, uh, what, what my firm does, what we do is we advise business owners how to treat their employees fairly. And we also fight for the rights of employees who experience discrimination. So we represent either the employer or the employee. Of course, we make sure that there's no conflict of interest. Um, but, and, and why do we do this? You, you're probably asking, well, like I said, we want to eliminate discrimination in the workplace. I mean, obviously we want to eliminate it everywhere in the world, but our focus as employment lawyers is, in, is the workplace. Uh, we believe everyone has the right to be treated fairly at work, regardless of you know who they are, regardless of their gender, gender identity, sexual orientation, race, religion, national origin, ethnicity, age, or disability, and there are other what we call protected categories as well. Um, look, I I just want to stop this from you know occurring, and um, our firm stands against discrimination in the workplace, and we stand for fairness and recognizing people for what they can contribute. And not, you know, basing our opinions about people based on these other characteristics. Um, we think it's the right thing to do um, because it gives people the opportunity to reach their full potential and to be happy at work and fulfilled at work. And it's more profitable for the owners of the businesses as well. When people are happy in their work, the business thrives. And, and that's really our goal. So, um, how do you build yourself or build your persona, your character in order to deal with situations like this? Hmm, that's a tough question. <laughs> um, I think experience helps, you know, when I was first starting out. Um, and, and this could be true in any practice area as a, being a lawyer. Um, you know, you I hate to say it, but, you know, some of my colleagues are more difficult to work with than others, right, when when they're on the other side of the aisle, so to speak. Some are very pleasant to work with and easy to deal with, and others are, are difficult. And you just kind of have to develop a tough skin. And you also have to um, have faith in your clients. Now, again, there, there are times when your clients are not telling you the truth or not telling you the whole story, right? Um, and so you have to make sure that you get the whole story from your clients and choose your clients carefully, right? Make sure that they're people of integrity, that that's, that's what I do, at least make sure my clients are people of integrity and that if they make a mistake, they make a mistake. Everybody does, including me, but, um, you know, that, that, that it's not intentional, right? And then we do the best we can to really, you know, help them get their lives back, whether it's a business owner who is having, you know, who's struggling because he has employees who are, you know, destroying his or her business, or, you know, it, it's an individual employee who is struggling because they're being treated, you know, in a discriminatory way. You did mention staff, and I know that for a growing firm, there's many different types of staff. You have to yes. have administrative and marketing staff. That's where many virtual assistants can come in, but you also have to have paralegals, maybe other lawyers working with you so you can de delegate cases and start focusing more on managing the business instead of being run by the business. Yes. I, I was wondering, what's for you a healthy growth path towards a firm becoming a business? Um, well, I mean, I think, like I said, having enough employees to sustain the business to, you know, to to do the work, right? And not having the owner be the only person doing all the work. 
um, whether it's legal work or whether it's administrative work or the marketing, what have you. I mean, you can still, as the owner, obviously oversee everything to a certain extent until you get to a point where maybe you don't want to and you want to have, you know, a, a chief operating officer do that or or a professional legal administrator do that. Um, but or even a CEO, a chief executive officer, if you don't want to be the chief executive officer, typically the owners would be the chief executive officers, although they may use some outside consultants to help with that as well. Mm -hmm. um, but I think um, at a minimum, you want to have, you know, a legal administrative assistant, you want to have a paralegal, you want to have at least one other attorney, if not more, depending on, you know, how busy you are, how much how much work you have. Um, and then, of course, the, on the marketing side, certainly a marketing assistant, um, which is, you know, I, I have a virtual marketing assistant through Get Staffed Up. So that's um, quite valuable to me. Um, it's one of the positions that I felt I didn't need someone to be in the office. They could be virtual. They could do the work that needs to be done on, in marketing from anywhere. Mm -hmm. And we communicate like we are right now over Zoom. Mm -hmm. and, and I was actually... Email. Wondering, like, what's your relationship like with the people that work virtually with you and the people that work in house? For in this case, like your marketing assistant, what's that like? Um, you know, it took a little getting used to to not be um, with her. You know, in the office, do not have her be in the office physically. But, but it's actually it's fine. It's fine. I mean, I think Zoom Zoom is fine. You know, if, if I had to just talk to her over the phone, I, I probably wouldn't like that. But having the being able to see her on video um, and talk things through uh, works out just fine. It's it's a not for that position. It's a non issue for. I feel that for an attorney and a paralegal, I want them to be in the office. And that's really just because of the way my office is set up. I'm not paperless. Some some law firms are. And if you're paperless, well, you could have your entire staff be virtual. I'm not. I'm a little bit old school when it comes to that. So they actually do need, you know, even though most of our documents that we need are in the cloud. Um, I don't know. And there's something to be said for face to face contact, too. <laughs> That's, you know, in, in you know, in person contact. Um, and same with my legal assistant, because there's, you know, paper filing that needs to be done and things like that. And And people do come into the office as well. Some clients come into the office to meet with us. Um, you know, during COVID, um, everything was virtual, but now we're back to having some clients still do it over Zoom, others, you know, come into the office. So need a receptionist, somebody to greet them when they come in. This kind of takes me back to what we already discussed, uh, the make it or break it advice, if you call it like that. So have the right people and then have the right policies and procedures. Yeah. So all of those different considerations, because I think you're talking about both at the same time right now. If you have an employee or a team member, call it like that, and if that person is just not willing to commit, it doesn't matter if it's in-house or remote, they're not going to be working. They're going to pretend to work. They're going to move from place to That's place, true. like just That's carrying true. a file so that you think they're working. And then the computer, they're just going to move the mouse and, and make sure like there's some sort of activity. Yes. But when you have someone that's committed, so when you have the right people and then you have the right policies and procedures. So, for example, one of those is make sure you include them, make sure right. they know they are part of the team. Like it doesn't make any sense for everybody to be in-house when one of my key members is virtual. So I want them all to share the same experience. That's an incredible gesture for one person that's from offshore. So that level of consideration, of course, it makes a, risk, a business run better because everybody is okay with the standard. The norm is something that very, everyone is comfortable with. It's not toxic working environment. So it's going to be more productive. And yeah, when you have people that are working remotely and they're at their homes, they do tend to punch in more hours because they're comfortable. So like exactly, exactly. If they're if, right, if they're really engaged with their with their work and, you know, like I said, the person who's going to take advantage of that is going to take advantage of that in the office too. They they will find a way to go surf on the internet, you know, instead of working when they're in the office. So they'll do the same thing at home or they'll, you know, whatever it is they do at home, go, you know, take care of their laundry or whatever. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, no, that's very true. I also did make a, make it a point whenever I hired a new employee, um, to make sure I introduce them to my virtual employee 
you know, we did that um, just so she she has a sense of, you know, everybody who's working here, even though I'm the primary person who works with her. Yeah. First off, I want to thank you for everything that you stated. Uh, I think people that are looking to find their way inside the legal realm, looking to grow their business, looking to find the best and healthiest practices, they're going to understand and learn a lot because of this specific recording. Now, there's just one last thing that I'd like to ask, which is, can you let people know where they can find you and what you can do for them? Oh, sure. Absolutely. So um, I I have I have a website. The website is really is actually my name. It's alexrubinlaw.com, where you could also search it under uh, Rubin Employment Law. But I'm there are other there is another Rubin Employment Law um, on the web, but, it, but it's in a different state. It's in Maryland. I'm in New Jersey. Um, but I also practice in New York and Pennsylvania occasionally, um, because those are the states where I'm licensed. But it's it's um they can reach me at my email, a Rubin, that's a R U B I N at and Alex is spelled with an I, A L I X R U B I N Law dot com. Or they can, you know, call us if they're local, they can call us. Well, again, we only work with clients in New York, New Jersey, and Pennsylvania. Our phone number is 973-787-8442. And like I said before, um, I don't know if I said my, what I call my magic statement, but it's basically we we get employers and employees to stop fighting so everyone can get back to business. So, you know, we will represent either the employer or the employee who has um, an employment law issue. Mm -hmm. Well, Alex, I can't thank you enough for joining us today. You gave us a lot to consider. Um, thank you. Thank you again for joining us. And I hope to see you in the future as a return guest. All right. Well, you're welcome, Joe. Thank you.